to going to the Tri-Nations final at Ellen Road next Saturday, knowing that they have topped the table of the Tri-Nations. That will be an extra boost, and not only that, what a great boost for him in selecting the likes of Mickey Hyam, Danny Ward and Matt Diskin. Well, hang on to your hats, because there's a feeling this might be tasty early. The Game 6 of the Gillette Tri-Nations is underway, and here is Adrian Morley, and the forward battle early on will be pretty fierce. Carney is immediately in at dummy half for Great Britain. Many people thought he was the man of the match last week. This is Gareth Ellis now. Well, the Kiwis have just had a, a little bit of a meeting all week, and they have been saying to themselves that they're bitterly disappointed. They, they come under a lot of criticism from the New Zealand press, and they want to show that they can knock off this Great Britain side, who beat Australia last week. Good deep kick. Oh, and a little fumble by the fullback. Brent Webb, but the referee Tim Mander ruling the ball went backwards. Oh, he's very fortunate, as far as I'm concerned. Australian referee giving the benefit of the doubt. Nervous times, he's had a very good series as Brent Webb, the fullback. This is Vinnie Anderson now for New Zealand. They led Australia 12-8 at half-time at Queen's Park Rangers ground. They led Great Britain 12-2 at Huddersfield, but they fell apart in both matches in the second half. That's been their problem, and of course, Daniel Anderson, their coach, realises the only time that they've really responded was in the first game down in Auckland when they had that draw with the Australian side. A lot of pride at stake in the black and white tonight. Absolutely, and that's uh, Kupu, Warangi Kupu, wearing the head guard, who's uh, operating tonight at uh, loose forward. Here, though, now is Keith Senior, whose try last week absolutely wrapped the victory up for Great Britain. No, oh, and Fielden, that's a big hit. That's a terrific hit by Kupu, and Fielden didn't like it. I'm not surprised. It was a fair one, too. The loose forward, Kupu, bang, straight into it. Well, we knew there were going to be fireworks. It's always awkward, of course, for any side realising that they're already in the final. I know people keep saying it's a, a dead rubber, but Brian Noble and the Great Britain players realise they cannot take this too lightly. They've got to keep the momentum going for next week. We've had two minutes of the match, and we've got uh, Ian Millwood with us, as we have had throughout the course of this uh, Test Series in the Tri-Nations, so let's have a word from the St Helens coach right away. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Eddie, uh, we're talking about Great Britain in the final, which is great, and Australia already there, but we're probably looking at the, the form team of 40 minutes in the competition in New Zealand in the first half. If you look against Australia, uh, at the uh, the previous time they played, and they led at half-time, and against Great Britain, they led at half-time quite easily, and everyone was pessimistic in the uh, commentary box. So it'll be interesting to see if they can convert that into 80 minutes today. Do you feel that maybe there's a problem with their fitness? Well, you know what, I don't think it's a problem with their fitness. Uh, I don't think any team's got a fitness problem at this stage. I think it's been a little bit of promise in, in key areas, especially the uh, hooker position, the halfback and the standoff. They're inexperienced. So controlling a game, that has been their pr uh, uh, problem, possession. And uh, in the second half against uh, Great Britain at Huddersfield, they had no ball, and when they did have it, they lost too much. Penalty at the scrum was given to Great Britain then, you might have noticed. That's Sean O'Loughlin, this is Danny Maguire. He gives it a bit of width to Yestin Harris. Oh! makes the break, up the middle goes Harris, he has support both ways, held on, and took the tackle from Kayless and Brent Webb, but what a great run from Justin Harris, and here now is Danny Maguire, Maguire trying to trip his way to the line, so close, and haul down, but they are very, very close on the third tackle, Great Britain, Diskin, he finds O'Loughlin, O'Loughlin tries to delay the pass and does, has to take the tackle, and in there very quickly was Louis Anderson, fielding the dummy half, here now is Farrell, the captain. That's the second time Great Britain have run to the blind side and then funnel the ball back into the open. And a chance here for Gareth Ellis. And that's the turnover. They went for the power play. Brian Noble's men on the last tackle. Not surprising either. And they've now conceded a penalty, Great Britain. Something obviously went on in the afters after the referee had ordered the turnover. But what a break from Harris. Certainly was. Didn't do more of a shuffle than uh, the dummy, really. It was just a little run of the ball across his chest. Quite famous, of course, when uh, 
He was at Leeds many, many years ago. But a lot of people, they're interested how this halfback combination is going to fare. Justin Harris, Danny Maguire, and will our kicking game for Great Britain improve? It hasn't been good. Harris back in the fully-fledged international scene in rugby league, making his 11th appearance for Great Britain, and the eighth time that he has faced the New Zealanders. Van Gennar was the dummy half, Logan Swan, who will be operating for Warrington in the Super League next year, fumbled there by Swan, and Britain will have the head and feed at the scrum, and uh, Logan Swan saying that there were hands in there when he tried to get to his feet and play the ball. Well, it's always pretty difficult. You can see there, there's certainly left arm of Farrell hanging around, not to impress Logan Swan. And a great finish to the season, of course, Logan Swan. It's his 12th meeting with Great Britain, plus a World Cup semi-final against England in 2000. Great to see that, Eddie. Loose forward, Sean O'Loughlin, running with a lot of purpose from the break, and that is a big error. Well, it's a poor ball. Gareth Ellis should have taken that, though, Eddie. Steve O. The amazing thing about this try series has been the completion rate. And for anyone un un unaware of what a completion rate means, it's been able to control your, the ball for minimum, maximum amount of uh, the time you get it. It's been very, very high for Great Britain. They've been in the 80 and 90 percent in both games. And New Zealand have been very good in the first half, poor in the second. Isn't this unusual? I think they've dropped it three times, Great Britain. Yeah, you know I mean, and this has been their cornerstone of their success. Obviously, nerves. Uh coming into play and we expect that remember it, it's a big night for those uh, debutants and Shontane Harpy plays the ball quickly and here comes Luluai bullets the pass to Webb he gets it away to Lautiti comes back to Shontane Harpy again he's going backwards Morley's after him and Senior gets to him that's been the Wait. most impressive part about the Kiwis play on this tournament is the fact that they love to keep the ball alive. One. Logan Swan takes the tackle, it's the last one. Referee with the hand in the air and this is Webb and it's a good kick wide but a little bit too deep. It was in the air enough but it was far too deep and Carney that's a gift. And he gets the ball away brilliantly does uh, Carney to Paul Wellens. Not so sure that Wellens was aware of that but... Yeah, Carney's had an absolutely wonderful series. He has, and he's once been upon everywhere. a time he was of Hull FC, of course. Didn't actually play on this ground for the black and whites. It was over at the boulevard. I must say, though, that Brian Nolan must be absolutely over the moon at the fact that both the two wingers, Carney, Reardon, and the fullback Paul Wallens, they've been our outstanding players throughout. So it was the pack, I think. The, the, the British forward pack, Steve Owens, have stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Australia and New Zealand, Ian. Yeah, but on top of that, the three fullbacks, Webb, Minicello, and Wellens, their, their positional play has been outstanding. And this will be the key thing for Great Britain with a new kicker in Harris and Maguire, how can they break the lock on Webb, which other teams with Menachello and Willens has been very hard in the kicking for all three teams. Here is Yestin Harris, there is his first kick, that's straight up in the air, and again Webb is the man underneath it. Great positional play again from the New Zealand fullback, celebrated his 24th birthday on this tour, and he's injured there. Certainly got a knock, went down awkward well, Stert. A lot of impact here, you can see it just twists. Just got him on the ankle as he went through. Paul Rahi taking it forward for New Zealand. He's captaining his country for the very first time. Yet again, Eddie, we have not seen a very good kicking game, and, and that wasn't all that good either. It wasn't even brilliant from the Kiwis when they were pretty close to the British line. Little dab again down the touchline, and this time it evades Brian Carney. Wasn't interested in that. Well, that's not a bad option, you know. At least you're turning round the opposition, kicking into touch. Carney didn't want to have anything of that, and rightly so. But it look, it stops the momentum. You know, so many times we've kicked and allowed the opposition the chance to get a bit of a roll on and get over the advantage line. This is one way of slowing it down, and that's what the Kiwis want. Great Britain will realise they've got the power out wide and the pace to overcome Daniel Anderson's side. Yes, Daniel Anderson watching on there, and he knows that uh, his team claimed their first win in over a year against France last week. But the scoreline was surprising, 24-20. They were almost embarrassed, actually, by the French, and it took an Ali Laotiti late try to win that test match. So it hasn't been the greatest trip of all time. Good feet, though, here from Maguire. And almost through, and uh, he was harassed down by Luluai, and also over there, Shantaine Harpy. He now... Paul Wellens for Great Britain, gets them over the halfway line.
good tactics there by Great Britain, especially from Matt Diskin. Threw a long ball out wide, missed out two. Oh, what a tackle yet again from Kupu. Yes, he's putting himself about is uh, Warangi Kupu from the New Zealand Warriors. Made his test debut in France last week, and again the kick is into the arms of Webb, and he will respond for the Kiwis. Coming up to ten minutes on the watch in the first half here at the KC Stadium. Nil-nil, and Shontaine Harpy tackled by Gleeson and also O'Loughlin of Great Britain. Again, we see the Great Britain side out wide, coming in on the arc, forcing the Kiwis down the middle. That's what they did against the Australians. Ian Millwood making the point that, uh, of course, the sets of six, the completion rate was good, but probably the most important factor, especially against the Australians for Great Britain, was their error count was very low indeed. Well, on top of that too, Steve-O, is the Great Britain after tonight, no, they know in their final, but they want to keep this fantastic defence of having the tournament because you want, you get gain confidence, you know, you feel like you're bulletproof. So they want to keep that nice, smooth line, the communication going, regardless of what happens here today. Another high kick, but Wellens positioning himself perfectly underneath the kick. Are you surprised, gentlemen, that Robbie Paul is not out there tonight because the word from the touchline is... He's dropped. There's no problem with fitness. Well, to be fair, I don't think he's played all that well in the series. Simple as that. And obviously Daniel Anderson feels the same way. He's not getting any younger. And I've got to say, we criticised Great Britain last year, remember? When it was a dead rubber, that we should have brought the young kids in. And I must admire Daniel Anderson for doing exactly that. He knows, perhaps, he knows the quality of Robbie Paul. He wants to see what the youngest, youngest, youngsters can do. Yeah, on, on top of that, don't forget this young kid, Dean Hamilton. He's an exciting player. When I watched him play up at Cumbria for the Anzacs, and I was very impressed, and I think he deserves the opportunity. He's got speed, and he'll create doubt around the rucks. Bobby Paul, 28 years of age, by the way, right now. And, uh, by the way, he will be our guest next Saturday at the Tri-Nations final. We're live at Ellen Road in Leeds on Sky Sports 1 from 5.30, so half an hour earlier than uh, previously in the Tri-Nations. So it's a bit of a programme change for you. Great Britain, Australia, on air 5.30 next Saturday, Sky Sports 1 live from Ellen Road, and Robbie Paul will be... Our guest, he would sooner be out there in the middle, but he's with us in the commentary box and in the studio. And here now is Nigel Vanganar, gets to the 40-metre mark away from the British line. The defence so far standing firm, and it's Luluai, thought about the kick, passed inside to Webb. They're running it here because it's with Lauatiti. Good ball back from Lauatiti, he finds Clinton Tupi. And Tupi, no alternative really, another kick and a poor kick at that. Straight down the throat of Paul Wellens. It's pretty hard to find a negative about this series, but I have to say that the kicking from virtually all the three nations has not been top standard. Here now is Stuart Reardon, whose uh, entrance to the international arena has been spectacular. I tell you what, welcome to Test Football, Danny Maguire. That whole set of six, New Zealand just pinpointed him down their right-hand side and continually turn the ball back at him to work him over, test his durability and take a bit of spark out of him in attack. It's with O'Loughlin now, and he goes away from Rahihi. Couldn't get away from Tupi or Shontane Harpy. Brian, uh, Martin Gleeson was the dummy half. And here now comes Gareth Ellis, the captain of the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats. His last visit to the stadium... As captain of the Wildcats, they beat Hull in the playoffs, remember. It was a spectacular night for them. Will it be a spectacular night here for Britain? Can they finish top of the table? That's good defence from Gleeson and Carney. Yes, they can finish top of the table if they continue to do the kicks like that. Good play from the loose forward, Sean O'Loughlin. And That's great simple. defensive work from Carney again. But it just shows you if you can pin down the opposition, you can take control of this game. I also feel that perhaps Great Britain should change their tactics a bit. All they've tried to do is get the ball out wide, very quick from the play the ball area. We need a little bit more work in the forwards. We've got to make sure that we suck in this Kiwi defence. We're not doing that at the moment. Flying tackle from Morley, helped out by Diskin. And it was Kalis who felt the full weight of that Luluai with a kick down the line. Wellens on the second bounce collects. Chase is weak. Reardon. And he gets away from Tupi to Stuart Reardon. And Carney wanted it fed wide. Couldn't because Harpy got the tackle in. Now here comes Gleason. Should have been a penalty there. Shontaine Harpy certainly pulled down the man. There's a problem there for Kalis. There is. 
and this is Lachlan, and there might be a problem here for New Zealand because Kalis is out of the defensive line. That's a knock-on. The problem goes away. Well, not only a problem for the number eight, Jason Kalis, but uh, Paul Rahihi he didn't look too good either. See, Steve, you were talking about earlier about the, the kicking game hasn't been up to standard, you feel, in the try series But also keep in mind, sometimes your kick's only as good as your chase. And that time, they had a fantastic chase, New Zealand. They had more numbers. They only had two attacking players, Great Britain. That was Wellens and Reardon, and then trying to link up with Carney. But missed tackles, poor chase, all of a sudden creates what should have been a good kick into, into a poor position field-wise. So, you know, and I've watched twice now, New Zealand's kicked down to their left side, and one time I went in the touch there just recently, the chase was very poor. And that's where your enthusiasm, desire comes through, your ability to chase a ball. Well, I accept that, but th there's also a factor that if you both, the winger or the full-back, if you dissect them, turn them around, I know, if, and it even makes it a better option if your chase is solid. Yeah. Well, a major problem here for uh, Jason Kalis. And he is uh, poised to be replaced by brother Nathan. I think it may have pro be a problem with his knee. He seemed to twist rather awkwardly. Well, he's reluctant to to leave the field by the way. I think I think just lip read him say, I'm OK. Thank you, they do tell a few porky pies, you know, Eddie, over the years, <laughs> these, these players. They do, look, well, the knee is the, heavily bandaged now. They don't want to come off. This is the pinnacle to play for your country. The last thing you want to do is slip off. New Zealand's head and feed. Remember, it was because of the knock-on by Sean O'Loughlin. This is Nigel Vanganar. 11 tries, 24th cap. He played on the wing against uh, France last week, by the way. And the drive forward now by Logan Swan. New Zealand attacking in the shape of uh, Louis Anderson, the New Zealand Warriors. 19 years of age, his fifth cap in the space of a month. Rahihi, the captain, got that ball away to Nathan Kalis, who is on anyway. And Webb gets it away to Lautiti. Always danger when this fella has ball in hand, as he proved at Huddersfield. Last tackle here for New Zealand. Luluai's kick, again. Great positioning by Wellens and a flying challenge by Rahihi and finished off by Nathan Kalis. There was a big roar from the crowd, but there's nothing wrong with it. Certainly hit the shoulder, didn't make it into the face. Marcus, Marcus. He's been outstanding, hasn't he? Paul well, Wellens, he's a been lot of people's hearts missed a beat when they heard that Radlinski was out of the series, but hasn't Wellens, and I, I wouldn't expect anything other than the Ian Millwood to agree with this, hasn't Wellens been outstanding? Oh, talking about outstanding, how's this for a break? from big Adrian Morley, and a kick for Maguire to chase. Well, was that the right option? Probably not, but he could see there that Danny Maguire was being interfered with, he was running on the support play. That, that's a wonderful option, you know, that Brian Noble must be very pleased about, that when there is a break made, you'll guarantee that Danny Maguire is going to be sniffing about either side. I tell you what, Adrian Morley's not going to do is improve Great Britain's kicking game, is he? <laughs> no, it wasn't the best. Drive forward again by Kufu. Oh, and there's a problem there for Diskin. He is down and receiving treatment in a moment. As they get to him, he looks in agony on the halfway line. As the kick down the line from Vanganar is gobbled up again by Wellens. And Wellens gets away from Vanganar, but he can't get away from Francis Melly. And the referee halts the play because Diskin is in some distress. Oh, it looks as though the leg went right under it. It's in his knees. Watch it twist. The strain goes underneath it, and that does no good for the cartilage. He grabs on the outside of the knee straight away. Let's hope that he's going to be OK. A little bit of uh, oxygen to bring him back. Hey, guys. Nicky Hyam on the bench. Waiting hey, for his chance. Hey, guys, I know I made a bit of a joke of uh, Morley's kick, but you know what I thought was really great? That he had the creativity to kick it. The, the foresight was great. It was just the execution. The kick was good. I think Maguire probably wins the chase for it. You know, I, I applaud the front row for doing it. The bit I got a little bit of a uh, chuckle out of it was just the quality of the kick, which uh, reflects some of the kicking we've been talking about during the series at times. So we're going to see next year, St. Helens, <laughs> more of these back 
players, the back rows, kicking the football. Well, I've had a look at your resume about being the kicking coach there, and I'm just still <laughs> working over it at the moment. I'm just a bit worried about your feet. I could never kick. Couldn't kick for toffee. Well, there's a, there is a bit of a problem there is Adrian Morley, who put the kick in, but uh, there is more concern on the British bench now being shown for Matt Diskin. The stretcher has been called for... which is uh, such a shame for Diskin. Here's the injury again from a different angle. See the weight of the uh, the body just moves the knee away and you can see that he's clutching straight away, he's in agony. Well, well, they don't want to take him off on the stretcher, so they'll carry him off. Well, they told that he can return. It's a proud moment for the Leeds hooker, Matt Diskin, and also a proud moment for this guy who will replace him. Diskin goes off, sadly, on his test debut. Man of the match in the grand final, and on in his place, Mickey Hyam. Now let's see what uh, Mickey Hyam can do, because there has been a chorus from this commentary box throughout this series for Hyam to be given a chance. Well, he's got it. Not in the circumstances he would want, but he's got it nonetheless. And news of another injury. Kalis, uh, it's uh, Jason Kalis who's off the field for the Kiwis. Here's Chris. Yeah, that's right, Eddie. So uh, Great Britain are now reduced to 16 men. Diskin, I'm sure, won't be back. And uh, I think the same can be said for Jason Kalis. A left knee injury. He's got ice on the front and ice on the back. So I guess a suspected cruciate uh, injury there for Jason Kalis. Uh, but uh, we'll have to clarify that later on. Phil Arthur is checking the news about uh, Matt Diskin as Maguire's kick again is picked up by Brent Webb who got the pass away and uh, O'Loughlin and uh, Carney were there to combine to bring Shantane Harpy down. I just get the feeling, Eddie, you know, that uh, these Kiwis are beginning to believe in themselves. Well, Steve, that the last set of six was their best defensive set they've had the whole game. They really muscled up and, and took yards off Great Britain. And the kick, now they're back in their half. Knock on. Oh, the referee wipes the tackle count down. Back to one, he says. And they're going to go in here for the try. The ball was nicked over the top to Vinny Anderson by Ali Lauatiti. And Andy Farrell is going absolutely potty at referee Tim Nanda. But the referee has given the try. Well, that looked for all the world like a knock-on from up here, but Mr Manda was closer than all of us, and Vinnie Anderson of the New Zealand Warriors comes up with his fifth try at international level. New Zealand have the lead here. Fully deserved as well, Andy, mainly due to the fact that Great Britain stopped, expected the whistle, it didn't come. The Kiwis did great offload there. Rahiwi did it, and he said he went backwards, he said he was touched by a British player. And I'm afraid that Britain have been caught cold mainly by the fact they were looking towards Tim Mander, the Australian. Great offload by the prop forward. And the referee has made it that he was hit by a Great Britain player. O'Loughlin got his hand to it. Mickey Hyam was involved, he was down there. But Anderson, they said, we'll take it. Great play, though, by Lauatiti. But what an offload by Paul Rahihi, sensational stuff. It has stunned this huge crowd here. Oh. And Brent Webb now with the opportunity to add the extras from Bang in front of the sticks. It looked like a knock-on from up here, but the referee, I think, on second looking was absolutely spot on. And Brent Webb adds the extras. Vinnie Anderson try, converted by Brent Webb. It's Great Britain nil, New Zealand six. Look, when the ball goes loose, either way, you make sure that you get to it. And Great Britain failed to do it. They hung back. They were all saying, come on, ref. Here's the offload by the prop forward. You can see Mickey Hyam gets a fingertip to it. And Lauer Titi said, let's play on, boys. Nice little shimmy there from Vinnie Anderson. Play on the referee, Tim Mander, in a wonderful position. And Great Britain are absolutely stunned. I made the point 
that New Zealand slowly but surely were taking control of this game. They looked confident, got the defence sorted out, and their offloads, as we've seen throughout this competition in the first half, is again superb. Midway through this game six of the Tri-Nations, and Logan Swan in possession for New Zealand, looking to build on this six-point advantage that they have just established. It's with Luluai. He tries to go between two. Ellis and Mickey Heim, though, get in with the tackle. And here now is Webb. Well, he dropped that, and it was not done anyway. He missed the kick, first of all. <laughs> he certainly did. Try to get away with it. Well, Titi coming through, realised that uh, it was going to be a little kick through. Missed it. Just straight off knock on in the end. Well, they'll be disappointed, Daniel Anders, the uh, Kiwi coach. Nothing better than to get yourself in a pretty good position, and that's what they were after scoring a shock try. Well, Brian Noble would be a little bit uh, disappointed as well because Britain have had a couple of chances and they've spurned them. They certainly have, but uh, as I mentioned early, look, Great Britain have got to go back to basics, and that means you've got to start using your forwards. We have not seen any impact. Our forwards are not getting over the advantage line. You've got to boss the middle. Harris slides the kick so you... between the winger Harpy and Webb, but Webb again with the speed that Ian Millwood has referred to throughout the course of this series. But the two most significant breaks have been in the game being by two front rowers, Morley for Great Britain and Rahi for New Zealand. Either Daniel Anderson needs to be complimented or Paul Rahi, but he's his first game as captain. This is the longest minutes he's spent on the field in this tri-series, and he's been very do dominant. And it's great to see a front rower like Fielden for Great Britain who stays on for longer minutes and does the hard yards for a long period of time. This is Roy Asatazi, just on, and uh, Rahihi is the man he has replaced. And the kick over the top will turn Stuart Reardon around. And Reardon, faced by black jerseys everywhere, but little half break. Much better effort as well. Maguire, the dummy half, senior. Lifts your enthusiasm as well, you know, when you know that the opposition have to got to turn around for the kick. Carney, scampering run from dummy half, halted by the challenge from Louis Anderson, Mickey Heim and Farrell. And Farrell attracting three defenders to him whenever he gets the ball. On halfway, plays it to Heim. Here is Maguire. Now it's with Fielden, who's looking to offload. Stands, but eventually has to take the tackle. Logan Swan up top. And uh, Anderson, okay, okay. Farrell with the kick, Webb with the take, on the fly. Took it well there, under a lot of pressure. That was a good high kick. Good work there by Ali Laatiti. It looked like a British player was taken out there in the chase for the high kick. Well, they were both running in the same direction, and the rule states you can use your shoulder in that situation, and that is exactly what he did. Hey, Steve, hey, you know what? Tell me if this is right, what your thoughts are on this, but I'd like to see the ball get bruised a bit more on the kick. They're all very delicate kicks, but very short yardage. Let's reef it. We've never seen any 20-metre restarts of the ball in the goal anywhere tonight. I wouldn't mind seeing that ball bruised a bit more by the, the impact from the foot to the ball. I'd like to see a few bones bruised out there as well. I don't think we've been all that uh, much with the impact, both carrying the football in the forwards or our defensive. This is Reardon for Britain, harassed by three. Keith Senior waits at dummy half. And now it's with Wellens. Pretty solid defence by the Kiwis. They're a bit shaky in the opening ten minutes, but they've really sorted themselves out. They're working hard, they're going as a unit. Make sure you stand up, Gareth. Hyam. Good ten metres made. No, sorry, it was O'Loughlin. This is Maguire who finds senior. Well, if there's one man that is causing... Great some... offload, there's Hyam. And here's Harris. Oh, Hyam! And an interception! And Harpy, well, Bradford teammates, and he read the script there. It was a whoa, an awfully long ball that he tried to play out wide then, Yeston Harris, and Harpy read the script. And here come the Kiwis in the shape of Ali Laotiti. And Laotiti stands and gets the ball away. And here is Brent Webb again, and back it comes now to Vanganar, who picks it up one-handed. Oh. 
Melly to Luluai. Luluai attacking them 12 metres short of the line, New Zealand. Logan Swan waits at dummy half. And it's another good first half building here for New Zealand with Webb who gets it away to the substitute, uh, rather to Coopy, the loose forward. And here is Webb again on the last, he's going for the line, Webb. And Britain having to muscle up in defence and they do this time. Went for the power play. Not the best option, I feel, and I'm not so sure that they coach Daniel Anderson. Impressed with that. Brent Webb getting a little bit excited, so is Morley. And he's thrown the ball into Morley. If you were going to throw it into somebody's face, I'd suggest that you run to the touch judge. You'd be safe there. I'd rather have the flag wrapped across your nose than a bit of a haymaker from Adrian Morley. He needs a good kick up the backside, this young kid. They had numbers on their left side. They were short of numbers. Gleeson and Carney were screaming for numbers. He runs from dummy half. He doesn't get anything out of it. You guys got a penalty down there because they did the same thing. So you got a penalty against you. Same thing, you delayed the play of the ball. Don't argue, you go away. Yeah, well, Adrian, it's... let me look after it. Got the it was interesting, listen to the referee, I stopped the pause there to listen to the referee because the kid's become frustrated because he's come up with an error and he's doubled it up now and released field position. Poor inexperience and put a bit of pressure on his team and they should have been a lot more dominant in that last tackle. Yes, it's 20 cheap metres that for Great Britain and uh, Danny Ward is on. That doesn't surprise me either. Brian Noble needs, he needs some go forward out there and we know that Danny Ward has done that for Leeds all throughout this season. And he makes his debut in the City of Hull, where his father made the last of his 12 tests in the City of Hull in 1982. So it's quite a moment for Danny Ward. And here is Yestin Harris. And this now is Danny Maguire, who finds Farrell. And they were waiting for Farrell, but he managed to get the ball away to Wellens. Harris, and he finds Ward. Pretty high shot as well from his teammate, La Titi. Harris just dropped the shoulder, but... Uh, the Kiwis wouldn't be fooled, but he gets the ball away just the same. Ellis and Walker, and on the bounce it goes to Carney. And Carney will try and inject a bit of speed. Elusive runner, Brian Carney, but down a blind alley here. Quick play, the ball is needed now. Last tackle here for Great Britain. And here is Harris. He finds Maguire. And that's a good ball. wants a word, does he, with the New Zealand defender who seemed to go into the back of Keith Senior as he scored that try. He's called him to him. It's Brent Webb. And and all, senior gets the try. All came about by great work from Brian Carney, showing a lot of composure. And then they went on the last, they run it. Didn't bother with a kick. What, what a, a ball from the Maguire. Unbelievable. See how he just missed out the prop forward, Adrian Morley. And it sucks in the winger. He's left in no man's land here. Look at this. Where am I? Bang. Two great con play. Great combination by the two guys from Leeds. Two contrasting styles. Webb, a young player, up the other end, doesn't know how to handle the last tackle. He had the same opportunity. Maguire gets the same opportunity on the last tackle. He converts it with points. Difference between the two sides with two youngsters. One handled it, one didn't. Well, Keith Senior, the hero last week with his match-clinching try at Wigan against Australia. And he was on the end of an absolutely peach of a pass from Danny Maguire. And now Andy Farrell with the opportunity to add the extras. Great Britain, of course, two test wins in a row right now. Can they make it three on the bounce? The last time they achieved that, ten years ago, 1993, 1994, six wins in a row under Malcolm Reilly, and then one more under Ellery Hanley. And this big crowd now waiting to see whether Farrell can add the extras and pull Great Britain level. Farrell who is uh, fourth on the all-time goal-kicking charts for Great Britain, but he has missed that one. He'll be bitterly disappointed as well. Normally he eats those for breakfast, but at least he has got his side back into this game. There you see the dummy runners. It, it, it's nothing unusual, but look at the way that Francis Melly was just sucked into absolutely no-man's land. And Senior 
Beautiful. Had a little bit of a shot back. It was pretty late, was Brent Webb. And she... the referee had a word with Brent Webb as well. And rightly so. Who kicks off, restarts, and here comes Morley. That's a great run from Morley. That's better. A little more, more enthusiasm in the forwards. And isn't it amazing? The man that's carrying the football now, Brian Carney, he lifted the side. He ran all over the place and then dragged in the defence. Here comes Gleeson and Britain up to halfway on the third tackle. From the kickoff, remember. Walker couldn't get the ball away. Good tackling by the New Zealand number 15, Asotazi. But here comes. Uh, Mickey Hyam just lost his foot in there did uh, the substitute not the best kick ball played the man this will still be the last it is and there's another kick from Adrian Morley that's the second in this match I wonder how many he's kicked in his entire career before tonight well it's, it's amazing we've been calling on the fact that the Great Britain hasn't had a good kicking game maybe Mr Morley said I'm going to start taking control here well, we've got some news coming in from uh, Bill Arthur and Matt Diskin. Is that Morley out there or Kim Morley, by the way, Eddie? But uh, <laughs> the news of Matt Diskin is still that he's in the Great Britain dressing room and being treated by team doctor Professor Chris Brooks. And the fear is that it is knee ligament damage, but as yet there is no hard confirmation of that. Well, if that's the case, that could be very, very bad news for the Leeds Rhinos who face the Canterbury Bulldogs in the World Club Challenge on February the 4th. At Elland Road, where we finish this season, we pick up the threads for the new season in 2005 at uh, Ellen Road for the World Club Championship between the Rhinos and the Bulldogs. That's, as I say, for 2005, reared and great juggling skills. Wonderful positioning, though. OK. He nearly dropped it, but the mere fact that it, it showed the enthusiasm to go back and assist the fullback Paul Wellens. Kicker Morley off the field. And this is Paul Johnson who has replaced him. Second appearance as a sub for Great Britain, and both of them in consecutive weeks. Farrell up to halfway. Maguire's in there at dummy half. Hyam wanted to take control, but Maguire did so. Found Harris. Good ball back on the inside then to Ellis. The tackle by Kupu, it had to be as well. And a high kick to the corner from Maguire, but uh, no pressure on Francis Melli. Eddie, the last two sets of, uh, they've had Great Britain, I'll tell you what, they are starting to make easy yardage around the ruck area. They've made easy metres, and they've really beaten them. And one of the reasons is they look a lot more athletic, and it's the back end of this half, they look more mobile and quicker. They are making easy yards now, Great Britain, around the ruck area. That was Clinton Tupi with the run. This is Ali Lauatiti from dummy half. Such a difficult man to put down, as everybody in the Super League knows, from his half a season with the Leeds Rhinos, culminating in the championship at... Old Trafford in the grand final. And Harpy plays the ball quickly on the last. And it's Lulawai with the kick right down the middle of the pitch. And Reardon has to collect this. And he does. And Reardon will run the ball back, but uh, not too far. Only as far as Vinny Anderson, senior. Now, with Great Britain in possession here, we have seen throughout this season in Super League the quality as a prop forward, Andy Farrell. I think this is a golden opportunity, you know, for Brian Noble to say to, to Andy, play tonight as a prop forward. Play with that same enthusiasm that you've shown throughout the Super League. They have a penalty here, Great Britain. Well, he's... And uh, he's Harris has tried to take it quickly, but it will come back because the referee hasn't blown the whistle a second time and made the mark. Well, he's going to probably have to do that, Steve. He's, he's probably run more metres because Paul Scarthorpe in this series has had been up in the top two in every game with Fielding, most carries, most metres. So someone's going to have to compensate, and I think Andy's going to have to be one of the people tonight who's going to have to be in the top two for Great Britain. Because in this series, up until tonight, he's been utilised as a normal second row, out wide in the centres, but this tonight is where he has to stand up and help this guy out, what? Danny Ward. They've got to get over that advantage line. He'll want the ball because he's come off a fantastic season, been man of steel, he's in good form, Andy. And here he is, and he gets the ball away. And here is Yestin Harris. He looks for support on his inside, it eventually arrives. No legs, no legs. And it was Martin Gleeson who plays the ball to Mickey Hyam. Back he comes to Farrell again. 
That's the hard work that we need. We've got to do the hard yards. Hi, and again, all oh, great scamper from Dummy Half. Gets the ball away to Gleeson, and Gleeson is hauled down by Ali Titi. There's a try coming here. It's with Harris. It's with Harris still. That's the last tackle for Great Britain. Will they come down the left channel? They do, first of all, with Harris, who fires the pass to Maguire, and then it goes into the chest of Paul Johnson. What a tackle by Nigel Vanganar. That's a try saver. Hold, hold. What an hit by the centre. Vanganar, it had to be as well. It was a good delayed pass there from Danny Maguire. The one thing I have noticed is... Oh, that's oh. great work from Ward. Fantastic work from Danny Ward, and a quick play of the ball. And here is Maguire, and he gets it wide to Harris. Carney is wide on the right. It's got to go to Carney and score, but Gleeson was looking for the glory himself. There is Maguire, and New Zealand muscling up in defence, and they halt him. But that was a try beckoning. There is another here for Walker. They've held him up. He is held up. Good work. Come back, and uh, he wasn't on the last. Well, Brian Noel will be very pleased with the... Very quick thinking there by the sub, Danny Ward. They tried to offload it. We'll continue on with the tackle count. It's on the fourth. Yes, they move it back now to the 10-metre mark when they're tackled over the line on their backs, and uh, the count continues, and this is Ellis. And that was a clatterer from Vanganar, last one. Farrell waits at dummy half. Ward's on his inside, misses him out, finds Harris, stabs the kick through. He was looking for the post then, Harris. And Haim almost did himself damage on the advertising hoardings. A lot more composure, good solid defence. Look how Ward, who realises that the ball's come loose, get out of the way, it's mine. And that's so important in tight games. But I just get the feeling, Eddie, that this Great Britain side now are starting to get into the swing of things. And most important is that Danny Maguire is becoming more and more influential and a lot more confident. Well, there's a... Nasty picture for Leeds Rhinos fans and Great Britain fans that uh, Matt Diskin is there on crutches with ice on the knee. And uh, here now comes Dean Hallatow. It's a bit of blow to be taken off injured in your first test. But he's young enough, he's got the quality, don't worry, this guy will be back. Asatazi played the ball and Brent Webb got it away to Anderson. Oh, and that was a looping pass that was going nowhere. And Danny Ward made sure that New Zealand were going nowhere on the halfway line, getting the tackle in on Nathan Kalis. Looking very tired of the Kiwis. Crossfield kick. It's a nasty bounce in front of Wellens, but he did well. You're running off the ball, mate. No, you're running off and Manda, Tim Manda, the referee, gives a penalty to New Zealand because there was interference off the ball by Great Britain. Well, he certainly pushed him out, but it goes back to that ruling. State that if you're running in the same direction, obviously Tim Mander felt that, that he took him out on the angle rather than running in the same direction. Well, this surprises me if uh, the Kiwis are going to go for the two points. Maybe well, that fellow Daniel Anderson realises they are getting tired. Uh, and it's only two and a half well, minutes to half time. Well, don't forget, they've just done a lot of tackling up that end. They're under immense pressure. You know, the other thing that annoys you about New Zealand, if you're a New Zealand supporter or coach, is that they don't understand at times their game sense when to unload and when not to offload. They offload the there and have put them under so much pressure. And, and their understanding of that at time must be very frustrating for the coach and fellow players. Daniel Anderson making his way down with James Luluai to uh, the dressing room area. There won't be much left of the first half after this, and New Zealand looking to increase their lead. They lead 6-4 at the moment, and this kick from Brent Webb to make it 8-4. Oh, and he's missed it. Well, that is and could be a costly error. And as it makes up with the fact that uh, Andy Farrell missed one earlier, in the conversion and uh, in many ways, they're just... A little bit up and down both sides. And Mr. Mander has just said to Mickey Hyam, don't push your luck. Farrell with the dropout. And here come the Kiwis again, up to half-time. Another good offload. 
Broken field position here and a, a drive forward by Kalis. That's Nathan Kalis. And this is Luluai. Luluai gets the ball away to uh, Asotasi. And this is Halatau. Good run. Wrapped up though. Walker. Ryan Noble knows they're in the last minute of the first half. And this is Webb. And he got the ball away, Webb. And they're trying to apply some pressure here to half time. And they will with a wonderful try from Nigel Mangana. The pass from Clinton Tupi was magnificent. And New Zealand, well, they missed the chance to kick the goal. But they get over for the try, courtesy of Nigel Van Genaar, his 12th try on his 24th appearance for his country. And that was wonderful play from New Zealand right on the stroke of half-time. So Britain will have to come from behind again in the second half if they are to win this match against the Kiwis, and Brian Noble knows it. Tremendous play. Watch the offload. Dummies around, watch the offload there from Latici. They should have closed him down. And wonderful work eventually from Tupi. Watch this, beautiful offload. And Van Genaar in for the try. And again, you have to point the finger at Great Britain. It gets anywhere near the end of a first half or a second half, and we become suspect. We just seem to fall apart. Well, Brent Webb missed with a simple kick a few moments ago. This one should be meat and drink to him. And it is two more points to the New Zealand total. It's 12-4, and there's the half-time siren. Now, two weeks ago in Huddersfield, it was 12-2 to New Zealand, and Britain came out in the second half and ran absolute riot. But can history repeat itself here at the KC Stadium in Hull? Another great first half from the Kiwis. Now then, do they have the petrol in the tank to maintain it in the second half, or will it be another second 40 capitulation? We shall see. International sport here, and the Tri-Nations in Rugby League. Game six, game seven is the final. Great Britain are in the final, but at half-time here, they trail New Zealand by 12 points to four. Well, only five penalties and uh, ten tackles missed by the Kiwis. Six breaks to four in Great Britain's favour. And uh, good running from dummy half. That is a statistic I'm sure that will please uh, Stevo. And the tackles. Matt Diskin topped the tackle count before he sadly had to leave the field. But Ali Lawatiti with his four offloads and uh, a couple of those have been absolutely crucial in this match already. And the New Zealanders in the crowd will be well pleased with what they've seen in that first half. But the good question now is, do the Kiwis have the ability to last the pace in the second 40? They did not lead in Auckland against Australia, and they drew that one, but they led against Australia at Loftus Road. They led against Great Britain, and uh, they lead here tonight. Can they hang on? Well, I know that Daniel Anderson, their coach, has uh, certainly been discussing that all this week. He said, pride for your country is what we need. But the one thing they have, they've done in the past is they've given away silly penalties, which have allowed the opposition to get the momentum, especially against Great Britain. It looked as though they had the GB boys on the rack, and then they gave away three silly penalties, and the game just completely turned around. Well, Paul Rahihi is uh, on the field there, the captain of New Zealand for the first time tonight, and he, with that run, almost gets them to halfway. Now, Rahihi gets them over the halfway line, New Zealand, on the fourth tackle. Be interesting to see what Daniel Anderson has said at halftime, because we know that the capability, that's a poor kick. We know the capability of the New Zealand is the offload. We saw that in the first 40 minutes. But this is the time when you're 12-4 in front, just to take things easy. Just ease yourself back into the game. Don't be too adventurous. Just control, make sure your defence is solid. 
Great Britain in possession with Paul Wellens, the fullback. And a little bit of interference there by Halato, but here goes Mickey Hyam trying to duck under the challenges. Oh, that should have been a penalty, and Manda realises it. This is Harris, gets the ball away to Hyam. Back it goes to Danny Maguire. Maguire from a standing start going nowhere. Tackle coming in on him from uh, Kufu. And here's Farrell now with the kick over the top. And again, on the bounce and easy. That's a meat and drink for Francis Melli. But they forced him laterally, and then the trap was snared up the middle. Clinton Tupi, who put in that wonder pass for that try in half-time. You know, Eddie, we talk about the kicking game. If you just see who New Zealand kicked to here in the second half, majority of the first half they kicked to Stuart Reardon after Brian Carney's outstanding game against Australia last week. And then the first kick after half-time, was it a poor kick or was it, there was it a reason why he kicked to Carney? I'm not sure, but I think you've got to keep away from Carney. It'd be interesting to see who they kicked to, Carney or Reardon. Let's get the half-time news from the dressing rooms. Our reporters on the sideline. Chris is with the Kiwis, Bill is with the Brits. Eddie, as far as Great Britain goes, it's uh, news concerning injuries. As we've already seen this evening, Matt Diskin helped off the field. Away goes Carney with that kick that went into his arms. And Carney fancies his chances here against Brent Webb. He gets away from two and he's still going, Carney. Fantastic run from Brian Carney to the 20 metre line. Oh, Lachlan. Ball comes in field to Yeston Harris. Back to Bill in a moment. Here is Danny Maguire. Short ball this time. Wellens. So close. Harris wants to get on with it. He's waiting at dummy half. And Harris will go on his own. But they have the strength to keep Yeston Harris out of New Zealand. Banganar is there, and so too is Halatau. Hyam spreads it. Here is Farrell attacking the line. And the pass finds Gleeson. And here. from deep in his own half and Brian Carney finished it in the corner what a run this fellow's having that's his fourth try and this is his seventh cap unbelievable play from the Irishman the determination, the ability he didn't lose his cool either he knew he had support back on the inside which is the loose forward Sean O'Loughlin but he decided to make sure that possession which is vital and from that position Watch this from Gleeson. In and out, see how it just sucks in Shontane Harpy, leaves the gap for Carney to go into the corner. Quite superb. It doesn't come much better than this. In and out, they just hesitate, drags in Shontane Harpy and Carney, who, as Eddie said, started the movement. What a tournament this guy is having. And remember, eight weeks ago, it looked as though he couldn't walk. He's proved them wrong. Go back to the kick, but Steve-O, they've kicked now twice to Carney. Australia kicked last week, and he absolutely crueled Australia. They've kicked, and they've come up with six, oh, well, hopefully six points. Well, maybe there are four to the name of Brian Carney. Will there be two alongside the name of uh, Andy Farrell here? Because it's the most difficult kick. It's about half a metre in from touch on this near side. But remember, Farrell is a left-footed kicker, and so it's... Uh, the better of the two sides for him. Farrell in the big screen and taking aim at the posts. And Farrell has kicked a beauty. Farrell has kicked a beauty. And Britain are back within two. Great Britain 10, New Zealand 12. A little bit of ginger brew, isn't it? Remember, it happened exactly the same way when the Kiwis came out for the second spell against Great Britain. It was Newton that scored that vital try. Now it's Brian Carney, who, is, I must say, has to be one of the superstars of this series so far. This should lift, and as we've seen yet again, the Kiwis, they've conceded a try in the early minutes after the restart. They just cannot get themselves going. Well, let's get back to Bill for the half-time news. Well, Eddie, it was just a Matt Diskin, as uh, we 
anticipated has got knee ligament damage right knee they're not sure the extent of it uh, professor chris brooks will have to analyze that tomorrow morning maybe and the other bad news for great britain or certainly worrying news is that gareth ellis finished that first half with an ankle injury and it could be ankle ligament trouble but it is not a serious injury according to great britain and there's another player down on the halfway line so it's, it's Danny, Danny Maguire, Maguire and so uh, Great Britain and they really don't need this with next weekend in mind they really don't need this are suffering one or two bumps and bruises tonight on the injury front Bill uh, that the Kiwi cab good news in fact Jason Kalis he is back up and running he's got his uh, his boots on whether he'll be used is another question you know the last thing I heard come out of the Kiwis camp when they opened their dressing room door was watch the wingers well they certainly were caught watching Brian Carney make that break earlier and then strolling in for the try uh, Daniel Anderson though he was quite happy with execution in the first half uh, he said to me all I'm worried about Chris is the first three sets of six well so far it's not really going according to script they did have a, a team meeting last night a team dinner where every single player stood in front of their teammates and discussed what has gone wrong on this tour where they can improve and Daniel said now is the chance for all of you to be honest with yourself and he was pretty happy at halftime well he would be pretty happy at halftime I don't think he's uh, too happy just now because it's only two points and uh, Great Britain won't be too happy with the challenge that Paul Rahihi put in on uh, Danny Maguire and the kick downfield a few minutes ago here is Maguire he's fully recovered but it was a heavy heavy challenge and he needed some uh, he needed some treatment this is Wellens. Well, it certainly was late. Made the impact. Thankfully, Maguire looks all right. This is Farrell. This is the moment now where Great Britain have to show they can lift up a gear. Mickey Hyam waits. Yeston Harris, 20 metres away. Lovely drop of the shoulder and a little step from Harris. Hyam again. They're within six metres. They've loaded this right-hand side, and it's looking for Carney. And Carney almost claimed it, but the ball slipped out of his fingers and went over the line. He doesn't look too concerned. Then put Shantane Harpy under a lot of pressure. He should have taken that in many ways. Stuart Fielden had his coat on when Great Britain came out for the start of this second half, but now he's out there on the field and he's trying to harass the ball carrier to the ground, and he helps them do that. Clinton Tupi it was. And Great Britain penalised offside. I think it's not standing square, maybe. No, it was, good the work. it was good work by Vinny Anderson. Realised that Great Britain were very slow to get back to 10 metres. Took the advantage, run right into it. No option, Tim Mander, the uh, official, to give away the penalty. Not the best king in a touch, though. Not many yards gained on that occasion. Well, can New Zealand hang on, indeed? Can they push on and, and win this match? Because they are without a win. Against Great Britain since the first test victory over them, 30-16 at Blackburn in 2002, the opening test of that series. It's with Brent Webb who finds Ali Lautiti. Lautiti, brilliant hands again to Tupi, and he tried to get the ball away. Only found Sean O'Loughlin, who found Carney, who finds Andy Farrell, and Farrell taking them on. Hangs on to the ball, takes the tackle that came in from Kupu. And Reardon, faced by Vanganar. Ball goes to ground, and it's play on, the ball went backwards. This is Fielder, and he's wiping the tackle count down as well as the referee. Certainly got a touch to it, did a uh, New Zealand player. Now then, good hard, solid. We need a, we need a lot more strength in the second half. A little, bit, a little bit shy in that first 40. Harris running the angle, delaying the pass, finds Gleeson. Gleeson's coming back on the inside, gives it then to Johnson. And Johnson is clattered to the ground by Nathan Kalis. They're struggling out wide to get their defensive line, but very slow. That should have been another penalty. And Maguire, Maguire flicks the ball back. And here comes Stuart Fielding again. Scored the try of this Tri Nations series last week. Stumbled as he tried to play the ball quickly. Harris short ball, and Lachlan spins away. New Zealand muscling up in defence. Two more tackles to go. High and weights. Use the dummy runner. It's with Farrell. And Farrell scores the second try in the second half for Great Britain. The man who tonight wins his 33rd cap. Level now in total with Martin 
Maguire and Daryl Powell, who both played with him on his test debut in 1993. And Andy Farrell with the captain's knock there. And he gives Great Britain the lead for the first time here at the KC Stadium. Tremendous try from the skipper, it needed to be, but better build-up. Brian Noble will be very, very happy with this. See how he utilised the man running back on the inside. It looked as though they were going to give it to Morley. There was a little bit of a schmozzle there. They had the opportunity, Senior got to it quickly. And the result, they thought he was going to go back inside. And he was in. Neat work by the skipper. And it has come at a valuable moment in this game. Andy Farrell might have made a try-scoring test debut against the Kiwis in 1993, but that, would you believe, is his first try for his country since 1997, when he played standoff in the Super League test against the Aussies at Old Trafford, which Great Britain won by 20 points to 12. Farrell then with the try and the captain now to try and add the extras to push Great Britain further ahead. It's 14-12 at this stage, 16-12 if the kick goes over. And again, New Zealand seem to be suffering from second half syndrome. It's absolutely unbelievable. Farrell adds the extras. 16-12 it is. Super play by the skipper. Beautiful dummy, looked as though the ball was going to come back on the inside. And Morley didn't get the ball, this man threw the dummy. There you see, see that Atatasi, <laughs> he took it. He told the prop forward ball it was coming through, but Great Britain, yet again, come back and take control. And here is Morley driving the ball in, Lao Titi there, and also Alex Chan, who has come on, the Melbourne Storm player, 29 years of age, played prop in Carcassonne last week on his international debut at the ripe old age of 29. And here comes Sean O'Loughlin. Is that a big game, the loose forward, Sean O'Loughlin? Put himself about, not only in attack and defence. And that'll be a knock-on. Knock-on against Stuart Fielden. Just the impact, couldn't hold it. And you can see there were fingertips all over the joint. But just the impact on the second tackle. Now TD pulls away. OK, let's get our formation. Just lost it. Just take your time here. So the scrum will go down on the halfway line. OK, mate. Chance here then for New Zealand to attack. They have not beaten Antipodean opposition in the city of Hull, Great Britain, since 1926. History beckons them then, but the Kiwis have pride to play for tonight. Wait, wait. And Biggest, here comes Alex Chan. Biggest problem for the Kiwis, and it has been throughout this series, that in the second half, their field position has been extremely poor. Oh, Brent Webb drops it. That's a knock-on. Well, they had to lean back slightly for it, but uh, a man of that stature really should have taken that ball. Disappointment on Daniel Anderson. Ian, what will Daniel Anderson be thinking here? Because it, it, it is happening far too often for New Zealand. They get to half time, brilliant in, in times. Second half comes along, white, white. and they go to they go to pieces. Well, what would be first of all disappointed because they wouldn't have only talked about it at half time today. They've talked about it all series. They'd be talking about a training, how to control a game, how to start to get the rhythm in their way, where they should kick, how they should complete their sets of six, where they like to give the ball back to Great Britain. The key is, if you look at the first three kicks, a couple to Carney, one out in the full, and then. I feel a little bit sorry for the right-hand side defence of New Zealand. Their left-hand side defence has too many numbers, so they're not equalising either. So there's a lack of communication, and there's a little bit of a negative thought there. And the key thing is their seven is very inexperienced. So that's where it all starts. So you don't point the finger in many ways, as far as I would be concerned. That was a high shot. I tackle from Lauer TT. Certainly was, but I just point the finger and say maybe that uh, this Kiwi side, they are not as fit as they should be in a competition like this. 
Well, you can go back to the luxury of the uh, motel food, couldn't you, and things like that. But I like to see them. they got big forwards. I like to see them rip in. Ben Team's back. Motel? They, they, go, <laughs> they don't go to motels these days. <laughs> they go to five-star establishments, I can assure you. Here's Field, and uh, we just had a glimpse there of the Great Britain captain, Andy Farrell. He's now become fourth on the Great Britain all-time point-scoring chart. He's gone above the Wigan legend, Jim Sullivan. A fantastic servant for Great Britain. Andy Farrell. And here comes Morley. Morley's wrestled to the ground. Hands out, hands out. Mickey Hyam. And he finds Harris, who in turn finds O'Loughlin. And the ball finds Gleason and Kearney is in for his second. Brian Kearney and Britain cutting them to shreds down this right hand side. second half back back is gathering momentum certainly is a wonderful approach play as well by the british boys in as much that they just sent it holding the defense and when you talk about the link and it was a good link as well great hands from gleason the one thing you've got to admire about martin gleason is his ability he's an old-fashioned center as far as i'm concerned look how he just shows the ball, says, come and get me, and as soon as they make the move, watch this, come to me. As soon as Harvey digs the shoulder, Carly goes in. Yes, you only saw four fingers there, and that's what is scored. I tell you what, Brian Carney, we talk about a motel, I think he's up ordering room service for Gleason. <laughs> the shout's on him, hasn't he put some beautiful balls on a platter and created space for him. He'll kept the space and hasn't run him into touch. Fantastic play by Gleason. Well, are we in Huddersfield or are we in Hull? Oh, because this... remember, two weeks ago, it was about three tries in 13 minutes. It's three tries in 13 minutes tonight. Deja vu. Farrell, exactly the same spot where he kicked the one from a few minutes ago, he's missed this one. What Brian Carney strike, yes, what a see. And I was talking actually to Gary Freeman and Steve uh, Blocker Roach at a function earlier this week, and they say that Brian Carney, as far as they are concerned, is the man of the series. Well, I've got to say, he's the form player of the series, and I've got to say, if you picked a, a, a team, say this is all possibles and probables this tournament, how many great players, uh, great Britain players would make it? I'll tell you what, an awful lot. Well, it looks a lot brighter now with an eight-point advantage than it did at half-time, just as it was at Huddersfield. Morley with a charging run! That's what was missing in the first half. And no doubt Brian Noble has got the message out there, come on. A lot more vim and vigour, and we've seen that so far. Brian Carney's after a hat-trick, I'll tell you. Fielden almost gets away from one, can't get away from the second man in, who was Asatazi, the substitute. And here is Maguire. He's uh, coming to terms with this international business, isn't he, Maguire? Oh, good ball again from Gleason. He finds Carney, who skims him down the right-hand side. He has support. Britain boys. Once you get the momentum going, it's very, very difficult to stop at this level. But take nothing away from this fella. Great utility player to come off the bench. But the ability to look for the space, and that's what Maguire did. Once you pull somebody out of the defensive line, and again, wonderful centre play by Gleeson. But look at the twinkle toes here. Did everything right. Brent Webb in no man's land, split between two. Johnson will remember that. But watch how they shift it out wide and then bring it back. You cannot allow any player to just run the roost like that. You can see there that Clinton Tupi came out of the line and watch this. Is this good or is it brilliant? I'll go for the latter. 
shot in. Harpy must wonder what on earth is coming down his wing. Farrell then for his third goal of the night from five attempts. He slides that through the upright. 26 points to 12, Great Britain lead. Very impressive, Ian. Well, I've got to say what's also impressive here is Martin Gleeson. He's a awareness where Carney was. Instead of doing the drawing pass, he said, listen, I'm going to show you me inside footwork, draw you back so I can preserve some space for Carney. I'll tell you what, what are these New Zealand guys thinking? They were sitting in that dressing room saying, hey, guys, we know what to do. Let's you know, not talk about it. Let's look and do it. And I'll tell you what, it's incredible that it, what's happened here is it, oh, it's, it's like Groundhog Day, Steve-O, isn't it, for them? Certainly is, but we, we knew, and I'm sure that the British players were sat in at half-time thinking to themselves, and Brian Dole, their coach, was fully aware, there wasn't that tempo, there wasn't that aggression. We've seen it in the second half, and you need it. And boy, the British boys needed this. They didn't want a repeat of the first half when they're taking on Australia next week. They want a tough encounter. I tell you what excites me too, Steve. Is the quality of the tries. They're not just barge over and score. They got they got skill. They got a lot of shape and evasion in them. And also the defence is good. This has been a fantastic period of rugby league here. It is Paul Johnson who gets to his feet and plays the ball to Gleeson and Fielden on the last. And there's in oh, and there's a right shimozzle there, and there's a fist thrown by Louis Anderson, and Fielden is annoyed. Fielding's more than annoyed, and Louis Anderson's brave. Well, that came out of absolutely nothing. It, it didn't appear to be... Well, there was interference. Fielding couldn't get to his feet, and then there was a punch thrown, and that was the end of it. Well, if it's interference, it doesn't give you a licence to start swinging. He just tried to put him away, and he just put the, dropped the arm. All right, maybe the elbow came through. I must say... Tim Mander, the Australian referee, has not impressed me tonight. There's been a lot of messing around, especially when people have been tackled. Both sides have tried to slow things down. And it's come about because they're getting frustrated in this area. No doubt that Fielden went with the elbows, obviously caught. Yeah, but it's frustration, Steve, it's frustration. It is. And, you know, it's a little bit of a copy out to sort of get distracted on that instead of worrying about what you should do in rugby league, and that's control the game. Morley, Great Britain looking for more here. Well, this is scored four unanswered tries so far. Lao Titi and Asatazi go off. This is where the Kiwis start losing. They're cool, they're coming out of the line. You saw yet again. Alatau came in and it's they're all over the place at the moment, but that's not the best pass. No, went to ground from uh, Yestin Harris. But Brian Noble will be... Uh, who will be content with the scoreline. That's right. But he wants more. See, they were trying to use the dummy runner there. It was uh, Paul Johnson that was coming through, but on that occasion, a bit of an up-and-down game from Yistin Harris. Done some good stuff and uh, come up with some bad stuff as well. well Great Britain then with this uh, lead. But it's the Kiwis in possession here with Logan Swan. Oh, what a break. Terrific break, it's Rahihi. Oh, and he just bounces Wellens out the way, gets the ball away to Webb. Here is Vanganar, and Great Britain are scrambling back in defence and there's pushing and shoving going on around the play of the ball again. Luluai, and he finds Webb, and Webb flicks a short ball. There's no way through, though, for Vinnie Anderson. Oh, he tried to get the ball away. It wasn't nicked that by Gleeson. It's play on, and Gleeson couldn't get the ball away to Maguire. Maguire then from dummy half. And Maguire takes the tackle from Alex Chan and also Kupu. A few of the Kiwis now, they're going for a little bit of the high shot. There's plenty of people out there. They have really, really started to lose it in the black and whites. And it could get worse if Britain going for another try. I think you might see a little bit of fireworks here. It's going to be interesting to see how the Australian referee, Tim Manda, handles this. this because is Stuart Fielden. There's a bit of squared up going on out there. Could have been a penalty, but a good run from Mickey Hyam. 
Can he get the ball away? No. That's the turnover. 16 minutes remaining here, and Britain ahead 26-12. You can see the Kiwis there struggling. Get back in defence. They really are out on their feet. Look at them, they're all standing. Nobody wants to take this ball. They've offloaded it. Good work by Tupi. Yes, it was. Another good run forward by the New Zealanders, halted by uh, Johnson. It was a run from Harpy. Webb gets the ball away to Alex Chan, the substitute. Late call by Daniel Anderson to bring him on as a replacement for uh, Robbie Paul. Robbie Paul not in this match. Great offload there also from Logan Swan, but uh, good defence again from Keith Senior. And the referee says he called held. Keith Senior has a wry smile. Well, he's been held back there by uh, Reid, and certainly uh, was pulled back by Logan Swan. Oh, and Logan Swan was looking to offload there to Kupu. You've got to be careful, Great Britain, here. They can't just sit back and say, oh, that's a shocker of a pass. But they can't just sit back and say, oh, we've got this game in the bag, because, believe you me, the one thing that they've lacked of the Kiwis, and they've done that throughout this series, is this field position. If they get there, they're still capable of scoring. Don't worry about that. And this is Rahihi. Three. One. Tackled by Fielding, who just steps over the Kiwi captain. Now here's Lulawai. Good ball. Great ball and the chance here for Asatazi. He stretches out and scores. That's great strength from Asatazi. And a great try from Asatazi as well, underneath the sticks. Well, I said he wasn't home, and Hose, and good play, good build-up there, and it all came about by some wonderful approach work by the prop forward, Paul Rahihi. And this fella really, really has put himself about. Excellent play. Look at that. Reached out, they're in all sorts of trouble. And Brent Webb adds the extras. Try underneath the sticks. 26-18, the score, and it was Alex Chan, actually, who got the touchdown. Alex Chan with his first test try right underneath the sticks. Fully deserved as well. Substitute, put himself about, but you've got to point that finger there again. Just a little bit slack there, Great Britain. Still plenty of time to go. We can't just... Hang on. Well, it's obvious, Steve, that Great Britain are going to have one eye on, on the final. Anyone says they're not, you know, they're kidding themselves, they will. But I'll tell you what, strap yourself in, because your New Zealanders will go for numerous offloads now. They'll really push the pass, which can create space for them and opportunity, but also could come up with errors and finish the game off for uh, Great Britain. Francis Melly plays the ball to Brent Webb, and here they come again in the shape of Alex Chan once more. That was Halatau. Here is Rahihi. And that's Kupu. Well, Great Britain showed last week against Australia that they do have the power to just go on with it and finish off the game. And that's exactly what they'd like to do tonight. But the New Zealanders will not let this go. That's Nigel Vanganai takes the tackle. And it's Webb. And Webb just drops the shoulder and... Uh, well, Lachlan got to him, it was a good job he did as well with Paul Johnson. Here goes Clinton Tupi on the last, there's the dab down the line, Wellens waits for it and pouches it the full-back. And what's the chase like? Oh, well, Wellens has the, the ability to go past those two. You know, he amazes, this, he amazes me, this fellow Paul Wellens, it's just... He, he looks as though he's walking at times, but yet he just strolls out of the would-be tackle. Harris to Wellens again. Plays the ball to Brian Carney. He's still looking for that hat-trick, Carney. Bit of a facial there as well. On Fielden. Fielden makes the break. Oh, and the pass was meant for Danny Ward. It looked a forward pass anyway. Yeah. And, uh, Coop, and uh, the New Zealand arm snaked out. It was the 
standoff, Vinnie Anderson. Good solid word, though, by Stuart Fielden. There's certain aspects about the forward play in the second half that Brian Dole will be extremely happy with. Webb. Logan Swan, and wide it goes to Melly. And Francis Melly, big, strong winger, and calls held, the referee. Ball is played quickly to Van Gennar, having to muscle up in defence again with Maguire and Senior. Wait! Wait! And Logan Swan. Here is Lulawai. And then up the middle they go with Nathan Kalis. That's the last tackle. Expect the kick here from Lulawai. No, he'll give it to Webb. And they're running it, and the stab through, it bounces off the legs. And back to one on the tackle camp. Brent Webb has got it back for New Zealand, and the, the ball was played at by Great Britain. Lulawai, Kalis. And the crowd are almost holding their breath here, wondering what's going to happen in the next ten minutes or so. Because Australia, uh, New Zealand rather, are not out of sight. Here is Rahi. And he gets the ball away, but badly, and Maguire gobbles it up. And Britain and the crowd here really do breathe a big sigh of relief. Good work there by Logan Swan. It had to be as well. Looked as though Maguire was away from him, and that's got to be a penalty again. But he's allowed so much advantage as Tim Mander. I'd like to ask Mr. Stevenson a question. Do you think we'll see a field goal here today, Mr. Stevenson? No. I think it's important that uh, Brian Noble does not send out the message out there. What they've got to do is they've got to really bury this Kiwi side. They've got to lay down the gauntlet to the Australians now that in the final eight and a half minutes that they are capable of what they did against the Australians and that is score a try. Put in the sword, kill off the ball, El Toro. Lachlan to Harris, high kick out wide, looking for Reardon. Oh, and there's a collision of Kiwis there. And uh, Luluai and uh, Webb. That was painful. Webb, though, managed to hang on to the ball. Well, they say three to one won't go, but it certainly did. And the full-back, Brent Webb, nobody was shouting. Lack of communication there. This is Shontaine Harpy. He spins away from Lachlan. Can't get away from Farrell or Wall. Back up, back up. Important now that Great Britain just make sure that they come out pretty strongly. Ooh, that's a pretty high from Chev Walker. Masatazi managed to bounce and keep going. And here is Vinnie Anderson. And this is Tupi, and he flicks the pass. And Asatazi is in support. And it's the Kiwis who are finishing the stronger here. Tupi again, it's on the last tackle. Luluai, Brent Webb, and wide, they have a man on the overlap. The kick, though, is downfield, and Wellens is after this. Collects it on his own line. Oh! That was hard. Well, that gets back to the problem that the Kiwi coach, Daniel Anderson, has had throughout this series. Get in a good position, does the right thing, and look at this, boom, Brent Webb. He's a great player but he comes up with some silly actions. That's the second high shot. Well, and the referee has just said to him, one, two cautions, you've just had your third and last. Well, how many do you get? Three, obviously. Yeah. So that's coming for inexperience again. That's the second time he's come up with two good kicks today, and he's come up with a penalty, which he's punished his team with field position, and it's just, just inappropriate, and he'll learn from it, you know, I mean, I'm sure he will, and this is what the test football's around. Some great young players on display here, and he's one that will learn from this series. He certainly will, Ian, but, but surely wouldn't he learn a lot quicker if the referee just says, here you are, there's a yellow card, go and spend ten minutes on the sideline thinking about it. Well, if you watch there too, Wellens' footwork is very good, and that's where Wellens is very good. He always beats the first person. Person. His game sense and footwork's fantastic. Here comes uh, Carney again down this wing. In touch, though. In touch, says the touch judge on this near side. Tremendous. Disputed by the Irishman. Tremendous enthusiasm, isn't it? Probably got it right as well. It released that football, perhaps. Pretty hard, though, for the touch judge, isn't it? We're a bit confused. Well, I know you are, Eddie. You're shaking your head somewhat. Wait for the whistle, Thomas. <laughs> Luluai and Webb, oh, it's a poor pass, it's a shocker. And Reardon gobbles that up. 
and Van Gaal was all over Reed and then just making sure that the New Zealanders defensive line is set this is Wellens got to get that Here's link Farrell. get that link working now and Maguire Gleeson Carney is free but Gleeson goes in field got a big night superb hands being shown by the centre Gleeson O'Loughlin Harris Farrell Wellens senior on the bounce forward not the best from Keith senior and he knows it turns to Stuart Reardon any youngster watching just close your eyes don't copy that it was a very good tackle, actually, on Senior, I thought that. Gave him no option. Right. Willie Tonga's been the left centre for Australia in the last... Oh, in the whole series he has, and uh, if he's sitting at home watching this in his motel uh, with room service, Steve-O, he'd be probably, at the moment, sort of shuddering a bit because Gleeson's coming into form. Being out uh, suspended for a long period with Super League this year, this has been an ideal game for him to keep his momentum. He looks a major threat, doesn't he, every time he gets yep. the ball. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets a nod for man of the match, but it, it'll be pretty hard to uh, stop Graham oh. Carney yet again. And Harris has swooped on the mistake. Carney is waiting on the wing. It arrives to Carney. Is this the hat trick for Carney? No, he's in touch. Well, Brian Noble knows. He had a wry smile on his face there that uh, he knew that Yiston Harris, when he got the football, Five or six years ago, they'd be kicking the goal. It's amazing what uh, age can do to you. It takes away a lot of speed. And good Stranley defence by the Kiwis there, but he looked as though it was going to be hat-trick time. Not many score hat-tricks in uh, the Great Britain colours. Senior gets up the top of Vanganai, plays the ball to Tupi, and it comes infield then to oh, Louis Anderson. No, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! You're offside. You listen. Next Saturday, 5.30, change to the scheduled time of our programme on Sky Sports 1. It's the Tri-Nations final. Great Britain against Australia, live from Ellen Road. It kicks off at 6.15, but here comes Shantaine Harpey. What a beautiful offload yet again from Ali Lautiti. Well, the man's a genius with ball in hand, there's no doubt about that. Here is Lulawai, and there's the kick to the corner. And Reardon has to be quick. Reardon is quick, but he's trapped in goal. With no option there, Reardon, and that was a good kick. Frustration, perhaps, going through the mind of Daniel Anderson. It's so close here, Millwood, is that, 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 that he knows... Brian Noble knows too that Daniel Anderson has got the players there. They just can't keep hold of it for the full 80 minutes. You know, Great Britain have gone through it for so many years. We could play so well against the Australians for 60, 70 minutes. And I think the same thing is now going through the Kiwis' minds. Yeah, the quality's there for New Zealand, but it's, it's not for 80 minutes, that's a problem. He'd be very happy with his last 20. They could have capitulated here and conceded a lot of points. They haven't, and they have scored. So th that little bit of mental state's been good for him. Listen, we've given Carney and Wellen some fantastic uh, raps during this series. Young Reardon from Bradford on the wing. Gee, he's yeah. been exceptional, been very good. Ranganar and Shantaine Harpy will score for New Zealand. And the New Zealanders are finishing the match the stronger here. Well, they've never given up the goals, have they? And full credit to them. And they must be kicking themselves, the Kiwis. Knowing that certain situations and at times where they just lost their control, Harper gets to four points. And you just wonder, don't you? then they will be kicking themselves and I'm sure that Daniel Anderson, the man that we're talking about, the Kiwis coach, will be saying we can do it at certain times. There's Brent Webb, the full-back, remember, give away a silly penalty. They've done it so often in this series where they get themselves into a good field position, give away that <laughs> offence. Well, Andy high Farrell tackle. is going absolutely potty with the British players because he knows that they have 
they have come out with more glory here in New Zealand in the latter stages of this second half. It's 26-22. It is 26-24. Two points in it, and the Kiwis can win this. New Zealand can win this because the referee stopped the clock almost as soon as that try was scored. Well, it looked easy peasy, didn't it? It looked as though... Well, they were top of the league, they were home and hose. <laughs> Britain were just getting through there. And this will be a deep kick, don't worry about that. Andy Farrell has got enough experience to realise that he will not kick out on the fall, probably just round about 15 metres away from the New Zealand try line. High kick, and now then, New Zealand will look to win this with some individual brilliance well they've got to chase their arm haven't they just keep it alive and you gotta, you gotta admire you know that it looked as though they were just going to capitulate they didn't alela titi logan swan rahihi they really have rolled up their sleeves and said hey come on talk about pride they have done their side and their country very well indeed so much pride on offer well, the thing is about this match now, we uh, have been talking about the closeness of this series from the very first, and this scoreline now is a little more appropriate in terms of the Tri-Nations as a whole. But uh, Great Britain now, if they hang on for this set of six, they've surely won the match and they will go forward as league leaders. But can they hang on to it? That's the important thing. Oh, no doubt about it. They'll, uh, they'll make sure that, that the last kick will go. There's the absentees, by the way, the men who are waiting for a oh, forward pass. Oh, they should have gone for the kick and touch. What on earth is going through the mind? Chef Walker. Lack New, of Ze concept. New Zealand are formed at the scrum. The referee holds the clock up again. And there are 11 seconds remaining. Well, they may get one play the ball, or will they go for a set piece? I reckon they might go for the set piece, which will be the kick, I feel. Well, how many times have we seen this before? Brent Webb. Brent Webb in the last seconds of the match. They'll just about do it. It's got to be a kick. This is their last chance, New Zealand. And here is Rahihi. And the ball has gone to ground. And the British player there was pulled down surely off the ball, but no, the referee will play on because the ball is still alive. No, it isn't. Oh, it's back to one. It's all over now. Oh, and a side relief. In the end, the side relief. A game that should have been a walk in the park. Ended very nervously for Great Britain, but they have won three in a row, which is the important thing. Even though at the end of the day they were hanging on at 26-24, they scored four unanswered tries. Four tries in 16 minutes in the second half. But then two late on from New Zealand, both of them converted by Brent Webb, gave us a very nervous last couple of minutes. But Britain finish the round-robin fixtures top of the table. And had that been offered at the start of this tournament six weeks ago, Brian Noble and Andy Farrell and company would have snatched your hand off. Mission almost accomplished. The big one to come next week against Australia in the final at Elland Road. And Brian Carney is the man of the match. He receives his commemorative rugby ball to celebrate that fact. And he talks now with Bill Arthur. Well, Brian, you finished on top of the Tri-Nations table, which must be so satisfying. It is satisfying, yeah. It's, uh, I said last week, we want to get into the final. First of all, it's always nice to finish on a win. It's three wins on the top of Great Britain, and I think it's a long time since that happened. A bit messy towards the end, but at the end of the day, we got W for a win beside the, beside the game, and that's huge for Great Britain. And that hat-trick was so close. You must have seen it with that tri-line beckoning just then. Yeah, well, I'm travelling over with PJ, so I had to give him a ball for that one. He'd never talk to me again. What about the one in the corner as well just now? Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> well, we'll try and forget about them ones and remember the good parts of the game. There were some scrappy parts with some real good parts, but as I say, the main thing is we got a result and we want to go into next week's game on the back of a win. Brian, well done. Let's bring the skipper in. Andy, Brian touched, summed it up really. There's some good bits 
some not so good bits, but it must have been very difficult. I mean, the coach had said, you know, you, you want to concentrate on this game, go in with a win, but you've got one eye on what's on the, on the horizon. Well, to, to be fair, no, we wasn't talking about it. We wanted to play well in this game and uh, a bit scrappy at times, but, you know, once again, we showed the character. We went in and behind and, you know, it's a, it's a big thing for a, for a side to score just before our time and we showed character again in the second half and showed what we're all about. And it was a scrappy game. I mean, s some of the uh, decisions might have left you a little bit perplexed. Well, to be fair, I thought uh, I'd rather look at the positive things and uh, I thought uh, shape at times and our ball movement was absolutely fantastic and we scored some fantastic tries and just what we needed for next week. And your composure as well, as you said, when your backs are against the wall, you know how to respond. Well, we knew that in the first half we dropped a bit of ball and we knew that um, for the last 15 minutes of the first half, even though that they scored, um, we, showed that, we showed that was uh, right in the game and uh, we just wanted to carry on that in the second half and hopefully we, we knew that we could uh, come out on top, which we have done.